Hello everybody, welcome, welcome. I'm Erin Reed from Erin Reed Makes and today we're gonna make a fun fold card that looks like it's a mixed media card, but it's actually kind of a fake out because of the amazing papers. And these papers are from Pam Bray. She's a girl with a flair and they're all from Wild Whisper. This is our newest collection and the collection is called, oh, I just had it in front of me, Sensations. So this is a pretty cool paper and they're awesome because they have double-sided gorgeous stuff and so i really wanted to showcase the fact that it was double-sided so how can you take a one-sided paper but really show it and this is an awesome little card that you can do that plus we're going to pull out some old punches that haven't had in ages welcome everybody who's getting on so here is our card and you can pull it like this but you can also open it this way so you really get to showcase all those yummy double-sided papers that you might have in your stash and this is a version that is a little bit of a faux mixed media so i have already got all my we're going to do the pinky one first and we're going to play with the stamp later this is the stamp set that goes with it it's beautiful well it doesn't go with it but it works um may your day be happy i just think that's awesome i love the flowers it's actually upside down here we go and it's got smile hello a dragonfly a butterfly and just it's really really cute so we're going to do that on the greenish card and i we're going to do the pinky card so the papers for the pinky card let me pull the papers here we go so this is the one side of the paper hi Riza. and this is the other side look how gorgeous this is it's so pretty so i love it when papers kind of do the hard work for me and she has created this paper line where it looks like it's just a canvas of mixed media but it's a whole paper that's full of that so it really you can kind of fake yourself out and make it look like you did all the hard work, but she did it for you, which is awesome. <laughs> okay, so this card could not be simpler in terms of making this, and I, my camera is all out of whack. I'm sorry, I'm gonna fix that. Think. There we go, now I'm, now I'm level. <laughs> that was bugging me <laughs> i can see the grid on my desk and so it looks funny when it's out of whack sorry about the jiggle so this is an a2 size card and normally for an a2 size card we've got eight and a half by five and a half and fold this in half right here and i'm just using a bright yellow cardstock um, I have her link for her products down below. I will be linking all the other products I I'm using uh, later once I get off. I will also be posting the measurements that I am using for all the bits and pieces. Isn't it pretty? Uh, let me show you guys the pattern paper. I did an unboxing of it because there's bits and pieces. So on this card, so this one's really pretty. For this card, I used this paper. And you can see I've already cut out bits and pieces of it. And then this is the other side. I'm in love with this side because it's blues. So pretty. Hi, Frosted Peppermint. <laughs> she also has a whole series of little bits and we've been using, I've been using parts of this and on the back side, look at the pretty, look how gorgeous that is. It's so gorgeous. And then the green one I'm using right now, no, this is gonna be the, yeah, the greeny card we're gonna use in a minute. This is one side and this is the other, it's the doilies. But I have some papers I have not even like gotten into. Here's the other section where the little pieces that get cut out and then that's the back side. And these ones I haven't even touched yet. So this is the one and there's the back side of that. So they're all so gorgeous. Here's another. And, and I love how this is the front cover, but if you cut this off, you've got all these amazing strips. Plus they turn the back side into a pattern paper. Hi Paula. And then this one's so pretty too. I was really, I was almost using this and I changed my mind and then look at the pretty on this. And this matches in with the paper that we're using this one. It's like very similar. So you get little bits and I just love the, the mixing of that. So look how cool, love it. All right, so that is her Sensations Papers and this is the prototype card that I made before we got started. Awesome, awesome. And so we're making one to do that fold. You take your A2 size card, fold it in half, so this is just a standard A2 size card, right? Oh, I'm so glad it's a great day in Missouri. Hi, Francis. <laughs> Hi, Paula. All right, so you fold this front part back. That's as hard as the card gets. <laughs> it's funny how you do one tiny little fold and it just changes the entire perspective. So now you're gonna open the card like this. This is probably one of the easiest fun fold cards there is out there. Hi, Jan, I don't know why your thing is not showing, but I'm gonna click. Hello, hello, Jen Jen, how you doing? All right, so simplest, simplest fun full card that you can make. And I have already cut all my little papers down to size. So this is gonna be the front of my card and I want to see a little bit of that back. So we're gonna have that there. 
I also, if you look at my template for my card, I pulled out a punch. I have not put a punch out in forever. Hi, Shirley. We got Florida in the house. We got Missouri in the house. Awesome stuff. Now, I went and dug into my stash of stuff, and I found two punches. And I think I'm going to use this. Oh, I haven't decided. So I used the fancy punch here on this one, and I... I pulled this one out. I'm not really sure if I want to do that one or not. It's a little bit blandy looking. So maybe I'm just going to stick. This is hands down probably the number one. If I'm going to use an edge punch, I gravitate to this one every single time. So I pulled out a piece of paper that is way bigger than I need. Ooh, am I missing a sheet of paper? I might be missing a little sheet of white. Either that or I stuffed it somewhere. I'm missing my little white border that I have here. So I might have to recut. Oh, no, just fell on the floor. It launched itself on the floor. There it is. Found it. <laughs> okay. So before I put this piece down, I need to do my punch. You guys have never played with edge punches. And these things have been around for ages. They're kind of from scrapbooking, but I think they work awesome with cards. And sometimes what's old is new again. So I punch right smack in the middle. And I'm going to trim this. So we're going to get there in a minute. And then I line up. This one happens to be a Martha Stewart punch. I don't even know if they make these things anymore, but I'm sure there's some people out there that still sell them. Um, there's versions. This one is a Martha Stewart, and this one is an EK success. I like this one, the way that it uh, folds, because it folds flat, and you just push the button, and then this is how you punch it. Um, this guy folds up this way, so it stores like that. So, How many of you have some of these punches, these border punches? left in your stash. I don't know. I just, I saw them and I was like, oh, I got to pull that out. I have not used that in ages. And why not? So all I'm doing is there's a little guide right here on the edge right there. So I'm just guiding it along and throwing that little punch. I just thought instead of just adding a plain border, why not? And sometimes they also have decorative dies that are out there that give you the fancy border. The, the key thing is, is that you want to line it up and go, we're going to go all the way across because I, I did the punch to be the correct length. I just didn't do the correct width. I always go wider, and this is all just trash, which I will put in my trash can right now. So I will always cut the correct length of mine because to cut through this is a nightmare. You're going to rip it, so don't do that. But for the width, I always go a little wider so I have something to hang on to as I'm punching. So pull at my handy-dandy trusty little paper trimmer. And we're going to cut this down to be, we're going to go about an inch. And so that's why I didn't want to go too short because then I wouldn't have as much to hang on to while I was trimming. And then I'll save that for another card. I always hang on to my white bits for stamping small stuff, or maybe it's like a border I need or, you know, writing down measurements because I don't have the measurements handy with me at that moment. So just to show you where I'm going, let me get all this other mess out of the way. So this is where I'm going. I'm going to line up and I got to make sure that this fold is just perfect. I think I'm a tiny bit off and it gets noticeable as soon as I put that punch on there. So I'm going to line this up so it sticks right at the edge. Now, I didn't want to see, if you notice, I've cut a little off and I haven't done that yet. So we're going to do that right now. So I want to have this line up. So I'm going to cut off about a half an inch and it's okay if there's more of the border showing, totally fine. So pull this out again. I'm weird. I have to, I have to have my blade on this side. You guys do that. Do you have to have like your trimmer face or I could face the trimmer either direction, but it feels really weird if I have my blade on the wrong side. I don't know why it's funny because I'm right-handed, but I like to have my, I think I like to hold the paper with my right hand because I'm very right hand dominant. And so far I know it's secure and then I'll slide with my left. I'm odd like that, but there we go. So you're going to cut off a little half inch off the edge. I have some of them, but I haven't used them in a long time. Get them out. Get them out. I have a lot and use them from time to time, especially in card in the, um, oh, a card in the middle. Very cool. I think it's, it's sometimes like if we put a supply away or we put a product away or a tool away and then we pull it back out and we're like, oh, it's like brand new again. <laughs> sometimes I'll pull a product out and I'll have it sit just off the edge of my desk. And sometimes if I just see it and it's sitting there, I'm more likely to use it than not. So I'm weird like that, but that's just how I roll. All right. So if you notice, look, it's just that little bit of extra something right there. 
right there. And I can see the yellow kind of poking through. I don't know why I like that. Not that you wouldn't be able to see that, but it, when you pull the card out, it gives you that, that border, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tape runner, go right along the edge here. And I'm going to line up, because I want my card to still be an A2 size card. I want it to be that size and not bigger. And then just line that up just like that. And there it is. So now when I open up my card, you can see that there's like there's there's the borders there. So it's just kind of adding a little something extra. You could also, this is the other, instead of having putting this on the front side, you could put this strip and attach it to the back side. Therefore, it would look like this from the front. So you could do that too. And tell you what, this looks like a pretty awesome little card, having that just a little extra detail on the side there. And then you build the card from there. Pretend the fold's not there. That would be an awesome little something that would be right there. So you could do it either way. I think for the other card, we're gonna put the strip on the back side, just to show you the difference. This one, I put it on the front side as well. So you do see a little bit of the white poking up here and here. And if that bothers you, put it on the back side. So like I said, we'll do that for the next card. All right, so now it's just a matter of building. So I'm gonna take this piece. Now, be careful when you attach this piece here, you do not want to add adhesive there. Otherwise your card's gonna get stuck shut. So I tend to come in, and I'll add all my adhesive. I love my Zyron, works awesome. Make sure my flower is not upside down. It could work upside down, I just don't want to. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it right side up. So just be careful of the orientation of your paper and be careful when you cut your paper that you orientate it, otherwise all your flowers would be going this way. And maybe that's the look you want, I don't know. Keep in mind this card could also work opening this direction. So if I screwed up and I cut the paper the wrong way and I totally put this on cattywonkus, don't you love that word, cattywonkus? There's some awesome words, English words out there and there, some of them aren't even English, but cattywonkus, whatchamacallit, doohickey, <laughs> thingamajig. There's some great words out there. You gotta use more of them, they're just fun. All right, so you could do your card facing this way and have a sentiment, that would be, an, this card would be fantastic working either way as a this direction card or this direction. Unfortunately, I didn't think of that ahead of time because I would have shown you that version as well. But all my papers I cut, well, I don't know. You know what? This paper, which is here, could go, you know what? We'll do that. We'll change the direction, the orientation of the next card. This one I can't because the flowers, making sure it's going the right way. So we'll really have an alternate card for round number two. All right, so here we have this. Now we're gonna open this up and here's the cool part. When I flip this open, you can see the design in there. Hello, Susie, we got Susie, Rita, Francis, Danelle. Hello, hello, Shirley, we got lots of people. Jan Jan, Paula, Riza, Frosted Peppermint. Woo lots of people here today. All right, so here we have the opening. Let me open it up. Sorry, getting my bearings again. And you can see that beautiful paper. So on the inside, I wanted to have a section of white. And I can't see I came up with this fun fold card, but with these papers, yes, I did. <laughs> um, I also, just as a heads up, I could not find the perfect paper color to go with this card. And I had this little dot Swiss dot paper. It's not Swiss, it's from Coordinations. You're supposed to sand it, which I could go back and sand it. And so, it, but it was the right color. So I was like, you know what? It's got an extra texture. So I got this really cool kind of bumpy texture on this card. All the other ones are just flat cardstock. So I wanted to have a white strip here because then that allowed you to write something. So for this card, I did add a little sentiment that came from her paper pack. I cut that out, but I left the bottom here so you could write something because this card was so bumpy. I didn't want to completely cover that up, but there's that. So that's why the white is there. And then I wanted to have a little more of that back paper showing. So that's why I have a strip right here. And then I wanted to have another little hint and nod of what was on the back side of the paper. So that's what goes there. So that's where those pieces came from. So all I did is I cut them down to be a quarter of an inch smaller than the size of the panel that is on there. So again, I will put all the measurements when I am done. And I made this piece a little bit bigger, but you could go the other way around. These two pieces are actually about the same size. They are the same size. You could make this one wider if you wanted. You could also just make the whole thing white if you wanted to, but I liked having that little extra strip of something. And then I don't know why I just flipped that over. White is white, it does not matter. <laughs> and then I wanted to have a little bit more of that yellow popping through. So there is that. 
So this card, I do have an extra little sentiment on the inside. This one, I am just going to leave it just like that. So there it is. So you can actually open the card like this, or you can open it like this. You can have all kinds of fun with that. All right, now time to build the front. So in her papers, she's got a whole bunch of really pretty flowers, and she does have the flowers also right here on her stamp, but I just wanted to keep the same coloration because she already had all the perfect colors, and I was being lazy, and I didn't feel like matching, so instead I'm going to fussy cut, and I did not get time to fussy cut before we started live. So you're going to see a tiny bit of my fussy cutting. So all I did is I'm going to layer up, and I found pattern just the yellow, which is the same yellow, and then I found this I don't know, what color would you call that? I'm not sure. Hi, Susie. I'm not sure what this is. Color, I like a rust color. And it worked with the front, it didn't fight. It also worked with the back. So I wanted to find colors and the yellow didn't fight either. Whenever I was finding a cardstock, I wanted to find colors that didn't fight with either side of the paper since I was using both sides. So that was a key thing on this. And then I had, she had a little piece right here that already said live in the moment and it was pink and it worked perfect. So that's what we're going with. So that goes right there. Do, do, do. Right there like that. All right, so now this card, I also wanna make sure that it stays within the A2 size boundaries. So I'm gonna butt this up right up against the edge. And I don't wanna go too low. I don't wanna go too high. So I'm just gonna make sure, make sure I'm not off camera here. I go right up against that edge there and it goes a little bit over, which I kind of like. I don't like it when they're too matchy matchy and lined up. Some people like that. For me, I like it being just a little bit off. And then we have these two beautiful flowers. So if you notice what I did here, I put the larger flower behind and then just a little flower on the top. Now, if you notice when I, I'm going to cut this thing out, you're not going to see half that flower. So I'm not going to worry about trying to fussy cut all of it. So I'm going to fussy cut some. And I love these hingy scissors for this. Get also the mess out of the way so I don't drop all my pieces on top of my cards. So you do not need to be super, super perfect when you're fussy cutting. And truthfully, I'm not even sure if like the brother scan and cut would scan this out perfectly. You could also get a piece of pattern paper or a, a card. You could take one of these pattern papers actually, or you could take a card stock. And if you've got a flower punch or a flower dye that would totally rock as well and be so super pretty it's really kind of up to you how you want to create your flower so i'm just going around the edges again like i said you don't have to be super perfect i i tend to come in and go and then i'll pull i don't turn the flower i don't know let me try and explain what i mean i don't come in and then turn the flower and try and come back out again um, you could, to me, I feel like I get a much cleaner point if I come into a point and I come in from the other section and then match that point and then pull that piece out. When it comes to a flower, that's, or when I get into like little nooks and crannies like that, I find it works a little bit better to me. That's just me. So how many of you guys like fussy cutting? Sometimes I get into it and sometimes I'm like, I just want to make this faster. <laughs> I feel like it depends on the kind of person or what you're doing. Like if I was just watching a TV show or I listen to music and, you know, it was just kind of like a background thing that I was kind of paying attention to. So instead of playing my Candy Crush while I'm watching TV, I could be fussy cutting things out. Some people will find that super therapeutic and awesome. And I ended up doing the entire flower, which I don't have to. So I'm going to show you the trick. I'm just going to cut this off because, oops, my little guide got in the way. So make sure that this piece is down. And then that just closes that up. So we're never going to see that corner. And I probably did way too much. I also don't want to, when I put this in, I could go totally behind. But I didn't like that. So I'm going to go between the two layers. So I'm going to put this right here. Lift up a little more than I think. There we go. And I kind of like lining up my flower right there. So that like the tip would be right there. I also don't want to cover up the live part too much because we're going to put this little flower. So it's going to come a little bit off. It's okay. It's going to be a little bit off. And that's just the nature. Either that or I might roll this in a tiny bit more. There we go. Maybe we'll do that. I haven't stuck anything down yet. And yes, I did pull up all my papers to... Uh, 
I'll have to put more paper back down or more adhesive back down because I pull the papers. This flower, I have to fully fussy cut out. And this one doesn't have as deep a ridges. That's why I am moving it around. There we go. So that one went really fast. Get rid of all my little bits and pieces here. All right. And then we're going to put this flower kind of like in the center and it matches. So it's kind of cool. So I'm going to lift this a little bit further up. And so it's going to look like that. And you could pop dot that up, but I'm just going to do straight adhesive. So I'm going to pull this flower out. And yeah, a little bit's going to stick out. And that's just the nature of this particular flower because of I don't want to cover up the lid. This one I could go further in because I stamped this. And so I had more room right here. This one, because it goes all the way to the edge, I had to trim this up. It just is not going to fit. So instead, we have a little bit of a wider flower. Totally cool. Add some more adhesive in here and see that I didn't have to fussy cut like two or three of those, but I didn't know how far I was pulling it in or out. So sometimes you can just go the whole way. Add a little bit of adhesive on there. It's going to go right there. Let me find the shortest spot. Sorry if you guys are hearing a puppy barking. It's our neighbor. He likes to go outside and tell everybody how his day is. <laughs> and so he just bark, 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 bark. He's a cutie pie, though. Or she is a she. So there it is. There's two cards. Woohoo! Daisy. Daisy's up. My, my son's looking at me like, what? You don't like Daisy? No, she's the one that barks. Yeah, Daisy's the one outside barking right now. My son's like, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so here's two versions of the same kind of card, just changing up the colors and the pattern papers. There we go. Now we're going to make it the third version, but we're going to alter things up a little bit. So this one, we're going to go back to the stamp in the front. But instead of doing a flower, we're going to do a little butterfly. And that's going to be our little element up in the corner. Oops, you can't see that. It's going to be a little element up in the corner. I felt like it needed something here. All right. So we have a our base of our cardstock right here. We're also going to turn the card to go the other direction. So just for grins and giggles, we're going to flip it so that our card opens vertically. We're also going to change it up. So fold, fold. So just in case you guys missed earlier, a two size fold and then fold this part back just like that. Right. To that. And then we're going to have it fold. So it goes like this just for changing things up. Why not? All right, so I have, let's go ahead and build our strips. So now we have a white strip, and then we have our flat, whoops, we're going to have this one. This one goes here. So I'm going to go ahead and build on the inside and get that done. Very, very pretty paper. So gorgeous. And this paper is a little bit thicker. It actually has a little bit of a gloss on it. So if you wanted to build this and add more mixed media to it, it, it has the capability of just taking the extra oomph and the weight of whatever kind of mixed media. It's also photo safe, it's acid free, so it's awesome, awesome, awesome. And then this little piece is gonna go right there. So just changing up the orientation of the card because we can. Yeah, so I just started pulling out some of my um, cardstocks. I have so much cardstock. So just solid color cardstock and just found colors. They may not be the perfect match, but I went ahead and looked at it and went, that actually doesn't like fight. It doesn't look awful. And then there was this little hint of the blue in there and a little hint of the blue. And again, it didn't fight. It's not the perfect match, but it's within, I think, the shade colors that work. And we're going to do the same punch. I just like this punch. I'm weird that way. And I always kind of tend to start in the center and then build from there. And so I like to sometimes lay it down on the table so I can get a better... Um, Clean. Oh, I went all the way to the edge. Yay. I like it when it works out that way. All right. So we go about to there. Okay. Making sure. Sometimes I'll go too far and I'll have a gap. And I'm like, ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. I didn't mean to go too far. There we go. Oh, and I messed it up. You know, it's okay. So one of the beautiful things about making cards that look like they're mixed media is guess what? If you have an oopsie, it looks like it's supposed to be that way. <laughs> like it's part of the grunginess. All right, so we're gonna trim this down to be at the one inch mark again, right there. And we're gonna trim off a half an inch off our front panel right here. There we go. And now, 
moving my thing, because we're going to make this a vertically opening card because this paper could go either way. It works just no matter what, you know, we're, we're totally cool on that. So because this card's going to open this way, we're also going to change it so that this goes on the back. So again, I screwed that up. And if that's something that really bothers you, I kind of like the little accent. I mean, it's just a little something grungy happening in the corner there, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to add a little adhesive right across here, right there. I'm going to line this up. So this is adding the strip to the back side of the card. So this is how you would do it. Have this strip just hang out right there and then fold it over. Just fold that over right there. And I, I just made sure that I didn't do my adhesive too far. I kept right along that edge there. And there's a tiny little spot, so I'm just gonna rub my finger across it, but I should be good. And so I could still orientate my card to go this direction and that would be totally cute. I gotta see if it's gonna work. I, I wanna try and do it this way for you guys. So these, this is where the sentiment's going. So where can I stick the sentiment? Cause I, I built it for the other direction. So where can I stick the sentiment? I don't know if it's gonna work guys. Not with the sentiment that I picked. The card works. I mean, so let's just do this. I'm going to build it the other way because I don't think my, for me, the sentiment doesn't make sense. I haven't wrapped my head around that yet. So we're going to build the card so it does go this direction. Um, but here, you can see what it looks like with that. And so then you have this open space to write. I, I can't, because I built it to go this way. <laughs> so my head's not working in the stamp. I don't think it's going to, for me, it doesn't work. For you guys, it might be awesome, but it's not in my head making sense. So I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna fight with and be like, oh, that card sucks because I didn't do it the right way I wanted it to. All right, so now I gotta decide where do I wanna have, I like this flower up here. I wanna see that full flower up there. So I'm gonna add my adhesive. Sorry, I keep changing my mind on you guys, but we did add the strip to the back. So there's something different. A little bit of an alternate there. So just make sure this lines up. I want to see a little bit of that strip of that white there just for grins and giggles. So I did that for all the, oh, well, this one I almost completely covered it up. This one I have a little strip of white. It just adds a little something extra there, right? Something different. All right, and that's done. Now we need to build our stamp. So I have my papers. So the stamp set comes from, this one's called uh, May Your Day Be Happy. It's also made by Pam Bray and um, manufactured by Wild Whisper. Sticky, sticky, sticky. All right, and on here, the size of my stamp, I might choose to do this on a different sheet. So this I made, it's almost, it's like one, a little bit bigger than one and a quarter. It's one and three eighths. I love having a ruler handy. Okay, so how big is this? I want to make sure, is this the one I was using? Oh, yes, yeah, so this is like the perfect width. So when I place this on here, no, it's a little bit too wide. So I can still trim this. That's good. Okay. I, I talk a lot. <laughs> I, I had the paper. I think I ended up using it or cutting it. I can't find the bigger piece. So I'm just going to line this paper up right here. I think I have my stamp. Nope, a little higher. If I had a bigger one, it, well, you know what? I can just do this. Take the stamp off and line it up with the paper, Aaron, versus uh, the other way around. And I'm going to butt this up, butt, butt this up, butt this down so I can trim off a little bit more out of my paper so it fits onto the two um, mats that I made. And then just do a nice, good stamp. For this, because it's in the front, I want to have a really, really clean stamp. So I'm using my Misty to make sure that I get good, clean lines on this. So stamp, stamp, stamp. Sometimes I use my stamp positioner and sometimes I will use my stamp blocks, but when I wanna make sure I have a good clean, I think having a double stamp on there uh, really does make a difference for that. And there we go. And I'm gonna pull this off so I don't forget. Pop this down off the ground, out of the way. I'm just gonna stick this in here. I don't know how many times I have stamped and I'm like, oh, I'll just clean that up later. And then I start cleaning everything up and I'll put my stamp back inside here and then I'll put everything away. And then I'll go back and open up my Misty or I'll look at my stamp block, excuse me, later. And I'm like, oh crap. And I already had put the stamp set away and it's in the, the thing up high and ah, it's a mess. So I'm trying to get back into the habit of putting my stamps away when I have them. <laughs> Hi, Darlene. <laughs> Lots of Illinois people here. Wow, very cool. 
I mess up using a block 98% of the time. Yeah, stamp blocks definitely, um, depending on what it is, but if I want a good clean stamp, especially if I want to make sure it looks really, really good, I will make sure that I use my stamp positioner. So I, and sometimes I like the size of that, but sometimes I wish I had a smaller one because usually I don't do giant stamps, but there are times when I like having a bigger one. So to me that the smaller one would just be um, saving for space in terms of how much space is on my desk and storage wise but that one's not too big i think that's a pretty good size one i don't think i would go bigger i really don't because even if i ended up stamping on something like on a scrapbook page because i know there's a 12 by 12 up there i don't tend to stab on scrapbook pages if i did it would be like on a smaller piece that i would cut out that that i would then add to a scrapbook page but it wouldn't be on the page itself all right so i think i need to go to about three and a quarter and then there's my first mat Yay, I'm good. <laughs> when I did the first one, I stamped it first, and then I build, I built my two mats um, off of the one after I'd cut it out. But since, sorry about that, since I had already stamped and cut it out once, I was pretty confident, so I went ahead and built my mats from that. So go ahead and layer. And I like the double layer mat. I think it adds a little something because it also really differentiates. Like this would be okay, but it's too green on green. Um, so I added that other color, just that pop of that other color to really kind of make it set out a little bit more. To me, it just makes a little bit more sense. Hello, Susie, how you doing? Hope everybody's having a great day. It is a sunshiny day. The kids are begging me. Our, our pool, our local pool opened. We have some regulations about how, how much we can be in the pool and all that kind of stuff. I think I'm going to set that right about there. So not all the way to the edge like I did with the other ones. So this one I went all the way to the edge. This one I'm going to go kind of like there. So we have to wear, the only time you can't, don't wear a mask because if you're actually physically in the pool, they're limiting how many people can be in the pool area. I'm going to put this right in this space where there's no flowers. Just kind of give me that spot right there. Um, they limited how many people can come and you can bring your own chairs and stuff but truly we have in our, our neighborhood pool there's two pools that are connected um you just walk between them one was an older pool and we have more people uh, move into the area so they built a second pool because we just had too many people in our neighborhood <laughs> so we built a second pool and um most people go to the newer pool but there's been so many times when we've gone and one of the pools is completely empty like we're the only we have our own private pool because nobody is there i don't know if it's the time of day that we're going but i don't ever feel like we have tons of people we don't have like a jam-packed pool i don't know how many how much is stuff opening up where you guys are we're happy to have our pool because we're hitting almost 100 degrees every day here in texas i live in the austin area and oh my god it's hot hot hot, hot. <laughs> super duper hot and then we're going to have a little blue butterfly just kind of hang out there so i put my adhesive do you guys like going swimming? Our pools are all closed for this. Oh, where do you live, Darlene? You're scared to use a public pool now? Um, everybody I've seen go to our local pool has been following the rules. And like I said, sometimes we're the only ones there. The only thing we touch is the gate, but I actually like use, I have like a sundress that I wear over top of my swimsuit and I put my hand over top of the sundress and then we don't touch anything else. Um, we pick chairs and benches that have been in full sun for the past and we don't pick one that we saw somebody just leave and then we're in the water the whole time and we don't touch the handrails as we're going in and out so there we go that's how i'm looking at it <laughs> oh i'm so glad these cards are on your weekend to-do list they are fun cards and i absolutely love pam's paper i, I was hoping she i forgot to tell her I was going with live with her stuff today, but I'm sure she'll watch this later on. Hopefully I'll send her the link, but um, she made some really, really cute papers. I mean, you can see these are all from the same line, but look how different all these cards are. All the colors are a little bit different. And then you open them up and you've got something little fun on the inside, a little, little something. And you could add like for this one, how I added the little something in there. And you could do that for them, you know, however you want. This one, I added the border on the backside. Pull out your edge punches, get them to be used, have some fun with them. They're just a cute set of little cards. 
you know, cut out little butterflies, cut out some of the flowers or punch out your own flowers or die cut your own flowers, however you want. Use up some of that extra cardstock to match the papers you have. It doesn't have to be a super big, super matchy matchy fit. Um, North Chicago, but Chicago is a hot spot. So we're number two in the state right now. Ooh, yeah, Chicago's not good. Yeah, in Austin area, we actually haven't been hit too hard. Be interesting to see what happens after everybody has gone out and protested because everybody's getting in close proximities again. So we'll have to see. I don't know. And the fact that they've opened up so much more stuff in our area, we'll have to see how, uh, what happens. So we're just, if we had, like the most people I've seen in our pool is like 10 <laughs> total. <laughs> so if it was like 50 people in the pool, I'd be like, no. But um, yeah, we, we only, like and like I said, we have two pools and sometimes we've had the entire pool all to ourselves. Nobody else is there. So I feel a little bit better about going. Plus, it's just hot. So maybe we'll get our own pool one day. I told my kids when we hit 100K subscribers, um, I, we would build a pool. So we'll see. <laughs> Tell everybody to come subscribe to my channel. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so if you love her papers, they're awesome. Wild Whisper. They are a Canadian-based company. Ooh, go Canada. Um, so they're a Canadian-based company, but they do have products that are listed here in the state. So I have the link based um, to set to go to Wild Whisper, but I'll find some other spots. They are also being um, manufactured and per not manufactured. They're also being sold in a lot of overseas stores. So if you're watching from Europe or from Asia, Australia, they have lots of companies and stores have picked those up too, which is awesome. And, but this is a great little card design that if you just have a really cool, fun sentiment in the front, and I love her sentiment, may your day be happy. We all need a happy day right now um, or live in the moment. But if you've got some cardstock papers, double-sided papers, this is a fun little card that if you're like, oh, I love both sides of that paper, this is a great little card that you can really showcase all of those awesome double-sided papers that you have. And then just pick a solid card stock that matches with that. And sometimes paper packs have all that stuff together for you. So you don't have to think about it. You just pick the colors you like and mix and match them however you wish. So thank you guys so much. Oh, I'm so glad you're inspired. Yay, that's what I hope for. I hope I inspire you whenever you leave. All right, heads up every Saturday for the next three weeks. So this Saturday... Saturday after, so it's the last three Saturdays in June, I have a video hop going on and it's use your scraps. So pull, I, I'm going to be pulling out my scraps. I might use some tools because tools are things that you can use, but like scraps of paper, scraps of bits of this, that, and the other pieces of kits that I never used. So I might have a full 12 by 12, but it was part of a kit that I never finished. And we have different projects happening and there's a few of us, I have a massive, massive giveaway uh, prize for just my channel, but there's also prizes on other channels and also prizes and grand prizes for watching all the video hops and leaving comments. That is every Saturday for the next three Saturdays. This first Saturday is all about embellishments. And then we have bookmarks and then we have cards. So it's different ways to use up your scraps. So it's called use your scraps <laughs> or bash your scraps or something like that. I have it's I, I, I yeah I, it's not in my head right now but it was but anyway it's using up your scraps there you go so come and check that out awesome awesome fun thank you guys so much for watching the video thumbs up please subscribe share my video and I will see you guys again later bye everybody have a great day. <laughs>